All right, let's just jump into the news. Uh, Zelensky is on a plane. Uh, maybe he's already here, but he's on the way to the United States. This will be his first trip outside of Ukraine since the war began. He is going to probably, well, he'll meet with Biden, but he's also probably going to um, uh, speak at a uh, joint session of Congress, uh, either today or tomorrow, and then he'll fly probably quickly back to Ukraine. At least that is the, that, 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 that's what it seems like right now. Of course, those kind of plans can change. Why is Zelensky coming? What's going on? Um, I think uh, basically he's coming because uh, his allies and he are afraid that the United States might not re uh, continue its support of uh, Ukraine's war effort. Uh, uh, you know, he is desperate in particular to get uh, Patriot missile uh, systems to try to knock down the, uh, the missiles that the Russians are using to destroy Ukrainian infrastructure, uh, civilian infrastructure, uh, uh, electricity, uh, uh, you know, power all over Ukraine is, is dramatically crippled. Uh, heating is dramatically crippled, the ability to produce uh, heating. So he is coming to I think show up, um, uh, show up support in the United States. I, uh, you know, both the left, uh, the left wing of the Democratic Party, and the elements within the Republican Party uh, are opposed to uh, U.S. support, U.S. Uh, providing military equipment to the Ukrainians. Um, and uh, I think the view is that, and I think this is right, that politicians. Uh, speak, uh, you know, they can talk, 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 but when actually confronted by a world leader who's famous and they get to shake his hand and they get to schmooze with him a little bit and he actually makes an appeal in person, they cave. They're just, uh, they're just not, they're just not going to stick by, uh, by their things. So I think he's coming, he's coming to schmooze, he's coming to shake hands, he's coming to, 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 you know, present the case for why this is in the United States self-interest to support Ukraine. I happen to agree with him. I think it is in the U.S. self-interest to support the Ukrainians. Uh, I think Putin is, um, given his attack on Ukraine, uh, made himself clearly an enemy of the U.S. and, 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 a, and, a, and a threat. Um, and uh, this is a relatively cheap way to uh, handle him and to deal with him, I think, there is significant American interest now in seeing uh, Putin's regime toppled and, uh, and having Ukrainians fight the fight for us and just providing them with sophisticated weapons is, um, is a relatively inexpensive way to deal with something that could be very, very expensive. And if Putin's regime did fall and if we got a friendly regime, that's a, a lot of ifs there, then, um, then you would uh, you would get a significant, um, you know, a significant benefit uh, for the United States. Um, yeah, nothing comes for free. It it costs money to provide weapons, um, so nothing is free. But the 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 upside it's an investment, because the upside the upside of seeing uh, you know Putin um, defeated is is huge it would it would take uh, russia off the map in terms of a strategic threat to the united states it would take uh if, if putin ultimately is replaced with a with a more a friendly regime um you you could actually see more investment in russian uh, natural resources which would lower uh, natural resource prices you could see a lot of uh a, a lot of dramatic uh dramatic improvement uh, globally um, if if uh, this nationalist trend, this nationalist BS in Russia uh, was uh, was crushed. So uh, uh, the good news is, uh, you know, Putin is losing. Uh, Putin is not losing the war. He is losing the economy. He is losing on every front. Uh, NATO will come out of this dramatically stronger with Sweden and Finland uh, added to it and potentially Ukraine. In, uh, in every dimension, uh, 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 Putin will lose. Ultimately, he, if the world, I mean, think about um, one of the most interesting things about what's happened is uh, how creative the Europeans have become, have gotten in uh, diversifying their um, natural gas supplies so that whatever happens in the future, Europe is going to be a lot less dependent on Russian natural gas and therefore 
Putin's market for natural gas is going to shrink significantly. He's going to have to build new pipelines, maybe to India, which is very difficult, or to China, uh, which is risky, which has its own risk. The, the reality is that the Russian uh, energy industry is being crushed by what's happening. Uh, there was this an explosion in Russia that destroyed a pipeline that uh, ships natural gas to Europe through Ukraine. Um, uh, that means Europe is getting even less natural gas from Russia, and yet Europe will survive this winter. And Europe will survive this winter to a large extent because it has now uh, more LNG ports now than it did at the beginning of the war. Many, many more ships are transporting um, uh, natural gas to Europe from all over the Middle East, from, from the United States, from Norway has increased uh, the amount of natural gas that it's pumping out and supplying to a variety of different countries. And of course, don't forget the fact that a number of countries, including Germany, have uh, delayed shutting down the nuclear energy plants. So Europe is in a much better position. Russia has been dramatically weakened. And whatever happens in, in the next year or so of this war, Russia is in deep, deep trouble uh, economically, energy-wise, and militarily. It, it basically will, will, will end this war with, with no military capacity, um, no uh, you know, uh, uh, non-nuclear military capacity. All they'll have is a nuclear arsenal, but no conventional weapons. The, 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 the weapons are basically being destroyed on the battlefield. They, they, it's so pathetic. I mean, just think of how pathetic as a country you are when you are relying for your military equipment on Iran and North Korea. All right. Um, so uh, Zelensky, so it's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to watch. It'll be interesting to see his presentation. Um, he is a, uh, an incredibly impressive war leader. Uh, he's, a, he's, an inc he, he's, he's good on his feet. He's good presenter. He's an actor, after all, uh, who tend to be good public speakers. Um, it, should be, it should be an interesting speech tonight, and uh, I think the schmoozing will work. I think you'll see a lot more Republicans and left Democrats who uh, suddenly uh, will find them in them to allocate a significant amount of, um, in the military budget, a significant amount to uh, supporting, in, in this actually temporary budget, the $1.7 trillion that Congress is going to pass any day now uh, as, a, as a budget, uh, they're going to find some, a little bit of a few crumbs to send over to Ukraine uh, to help defeat, uh, help defeat, uh, help withstand uh, the winter, and hopefully uh, continue defeating uh, defeating Putin. Okay, so uh, that is uh, that is uh, Zelensky in the United States. Uh Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show. We make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.